We greet you in the joy this morning of loving and serving Jesus, who is the head of our lives. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Right Reverend Samuel Lawrence Green, Sr., presiding prelate of the 7th Episcopal District, Sister Phyllis Ann Green, Episcopal Supervisor, to the Reverend Dr. Norville Golf, Sr., presiding elder of the Eddie Stowe District, and the sweet spirit of Sister A. Marie Golf, uh, consult, area consultant, to the Reverend Larry Nelson, uh, Pastor here at St. Luke, and to Dr. Freeman, uh, a retired pastor, and to the officers, members, and friends, and those on social media this morning, we greet you in the joy of just knowing and loving Jesus. Amen. Amen. Called to worship, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We shall sing praises unto the Lord, using our hymn of praise, O magnify the Lord, along with the choir, as the choir, youth and young adult choir will lead us now in our hymn.
Let us pray. I come to the garden alone. While the dew was still on the roses. And the voice I heard calling in my ears. The son of God is calling. Our father and our God, our creator and our redeemer. Our rock in a weary land. Our shelter in a time of storm. We come now on this Palm Sunday morning. First of all, giving you thanks for your son Jesus. Who came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We come this morning, Father, thanking you for another day. Father, we come with a humble heart and a meek spirit, realizing that we cannot do nothing without you. But with you, we can do all things but fail. Father, we ask now that you would come into our hearts, put on one accord, make us mindful that you made us and you know all about us. Uh Put nothing more on us than we can be. And Father, we pause now just to say thank you for these candidates this morning who come for Christian baptism. Father, we ask that you would baptize them with the Holy Spirit. Strengthen the parents, the guardians, Uh and the loved ones, the families and friends. Link us closer and closer together. For you said in your word, oh, for a closer walk with God, a calm and heavenly frame. Father, we come this morning realizing that all things is possible. Go with our pastor this morning, Father, as he unfold the words of eternal truth. Set him down in your bag of divine wisdom. That will touch someone this morning, Father, to realize that they're not of their own, but they have been purchased by your precious blood on Calvary, rugged cross, one day. Thank you, dear Lord, for our seniors, for those who have been who have been uh, stuck in with illness, that they're able to come out this morning, Father. We give you the praise. It's not because of us, but it's because of you. Thank you for Brother Gordon, Brother Murray, Brother Smith this morning. But Father, we praise you. We praise you this morning, Father. We lift you up because you said if I be lifted up from this earth, I'll draw all man unto me. And then, Father, can be one of the least of your servant. Come on, come on. Trying to do your will. Come on. Sometimes I'm on the mountaintop. Come on. Sometimes I'm in the valley. Come on. But you promise, you promise never to leave me yes, nor forsake me. Strengthen my family. Ah. Oh, Father, do more for them than I'm able to ask. My, my, my. And then, Lord, then, Lord, when the time that know us now yeah. will soon know us no more. Yeah. When we have to give up time for eternity, let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart, be acceptable in your sight. For you are our strength and our redeemer. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Lord. musical selection by the choir and then the scripture reading. you're worthy 
to be praised. A morning scripture, the Old Testament, 100th Psalm. A psalm of thanksgiving. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his coat with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and it is truth endured to all generations. The Old Testament reading. And our New Testament reading, Mark, the 10th chapter, verses 32 to 37, and 41 through 45. Verse 32. Now they were on the road going up to Jerusalem. And Jesus was going before them, and they were amazed. As they followed, they were afraid. Then he took the 12 aside again and began to tell them the things that would happen to him. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him. And the third day he will rise again. And when the 10 heard it, they began to be greatly displeased with James and John. But Jesus called them to himself and said to them, you know that those who are considered ruler over the Gentile lord it over them, and their great one exercises authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whosoever desire to become great among you shall be your servant, and whosoever of you desire to be first shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The word of God, blessed be God. From all that dwells below the skies. said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, yes, and the second is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophet. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Father. Continue our service now with uh, notices and announcements.
Good morning, St. Luke. Our first announcement comes from the Edisto District, 40 days of prayer, which takes place six, from 6 to 6.30 a.m. Monday through Thursday. That will continue until March 30th. I do have the teleconference and the access code. If you're interested, stop by after church, and I can give those to you. On Easter sunrise service, which is next Sunday, it will begin at 6 a.m. We will worship with Mount Ward this year here at St. Luke, Fallen Sunrise Worship. We will have breakfast followed by church school and morning worship. The Easter program rehearsal dates are Tuesday, March 26th and Thursday, March 28th at 6.30 p.m. A reminder, our family and friends are approaching very quickly. It will begin on Monday, April 8th through, April, sorry, through Friday, April 12th. The closing will be Sunday, April 14th. The theme, United and Unafraid. Chairpersons are Sister Darlene Ravenel and Brother Richard Mitchell, and also the committee mem mem members are coordinators. St. Matthews Davidson is, let's word it around. St. Matthews Davidson invite each of you to the crowning glory. The ultimate hat showcase on Saturday, April 13th at three o'clock p.m. Donation, $10. Sister Ann Smalls and Brother Kenneth Smalls have been asked to represent St. Luke. See Sister Ethel Anderson for tickets. Bethel AME Church, Jackson Barrow, is having its annual Women in Red, Men in Black program on Sunday, April 21st. The St. Luke Male Choir has been invited to be a part of that occasion. We have Easter envelopes that are ready. If you want to pick up your envelopes, you can see an usher. The Palmetto Cap Energy Assistance will be postponed until next Friday, that's April 5th at 9 a.m. here at St. Luke. If you haven't submitted your name, please see Sister Rhonda Miles, Atira Ellis. That concludes my announcements for this morning. I hope everybody enjoy the rest of your day and have a prosperous week. Good morning, morning. St. Lou. Good morning. <laughs> I didn't hear Reverend Nelson laughing, right? <laughs> so I know you heard earlier the announcement about our family and friends celebration, which is fast approaching. It is upon us. Um, we think it not robbery to come to you again on this morning with a special plea to each and every member of our church family. It doesn't matter if you are a member here at St. Luke or you're connected to a member here, we consider you a part of our extended family. So on this year, we are so proud to present to you our theme and what you heard earlier, United and Unafraid. As I sat this morning and I looked in the corner and saw Mr. Gordon over there, if you look at our flyer, he is one of the pillars for our family and friends celebration. He's definitely need our wings. So on this year, we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate our family and our friends from whence we've come. So starting on uh, the Monday after the first Sunday, we're gonna ask all of our chairpersons to please be ready to drop your donations off between the hours of five and 6.30, right here at the church. On Monday night, um, our family will be the Gordon and extended families. On Tuesday will be the Mitchell and extended families. On Wednesday, the Brown and extend, extended families are asked to celebrate. On Thursday, the Smith family and extended family, and, and on Friday, the Porter and extended family. Our closing celebration this year will conclude with the Nesbitt and our newly appointed pastor and his family and friends. And that will be held during our regular worship service. Now, I noticed today that we do have a lot of visitors and we do have a lot of friends here with us. 
and we know that you are connected to the Murray family. But we have you to know that you can join any family of this church. Brother Bing have envelopes um, for the chairpersons that may not have um, given, may not have enough envelopes. Please see us immediately following services. Um, Brother Richard Mitchell serves with me as our coordinator. He's not here today, but I am standing in the gap for this much a well-deserved and well-celebrated a celebration that we have here at St. Luke. So again, remember our theme. Even though we are few in number, we just want to remind you that we are united and we are unafraid because we are ready to receive what God has in store for us. The asking again is $100 or more per member, per friend, per guest, per whomever you are. And any member of the Murray family, if you would like to see me immediately following service, please do so. Thank you and God bless. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Ravnell. Thank you, Sister Gloria Smith, for sharing with us our announcement and for presenting to us uh, our family and friends day. And let me welcome all of you who have come here to worship together. Uh, we thank you for your presence. I've always said that you could have gone to any other church, any other mosque, any other mass that you had so desired, but you decided to come to St. Luke, Amen. downtown, Hollywood. and we are grateful to have you in the sanctuary Amen. this morning. So we count it all our blessing for your presence. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, go on. Just wanted to announcement. My sister in Christ is always getting on me because sometimes I do forget. Sometimes we get a lot of announcements and I'm bombarded and so I'm trying to actually compartmentalize everything. Uh, one, this announcement is coming from Sister Mary Nesbitt, who is the Coros Coordinator, the Greater Charleston Drifters. To Reverend Nelson, the ministerial, ministerial staff, officers and members, your generous gift and continued support of the Coros Mentoring Program is greatly appreciated. Words cannot adequately express our sincere gratitude. Our Coros lives will be changed forever through your kindness and compassion. Bless you for your giving heart, as kind as it can be. Bless you in a thousand ways for truly blessing us. Again, this comes from Miss Sister Mary Nesbitt. Also, at this time, if we have visitors that are here that will like to stand and uh, actually give your affiliation with the church or with a family at this time, please stand. And I know I'm pretty much asking the whole church because everybody in here look like, <laughs> look like morning people, <laughs> the Murrays. Anybody would like to stand and uh, give their affiliation or just say good morning? No? It ain't gonna be too much dipping. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Miss, Mr. Chick. <laughs> you all of downtown Hollywood, mm -hmm. but we are from the tropical island of Edisto. <laughs> <laughs> Where uh, J.P. Harrison is my pastor. Uh, all right. Thank you all so much. And uh, yeah. Amen. We thank you for thank being here. Thank everyone that took out the time to come this morning to worship with us. Amen. Thank you again, Sister Smith. Now the scripture tells us that let us give. That God loves a cheerful giver. 
So the ushers will come forward and we will take up what you have brought to give to this ministry today. things come of thee, O Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own, as we give unto thee. Amen. We truly want to thank you for your gift. Amen. May the Lord continue to bless you. Amen. Now it's preaching time. Amen. After the singing of our sermonic selection by the choir, let's give the choirs a hand this morning. Amen. Amen. If the Lord has blessed you with the voice to sing, then you become a part of this choir here. Amen. Afterwards, our pastor will come before us to bring the word. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Yes. Let me yes. thank yes. Let me thank Brother Lewis Haywood coming from his church, Wesley United Methodist, to our church to play what he plays on our organ as he fill in for our organist, Sister Kendra. I got a text last night that she was at the hospital with two of her sons. And then I got a text later on saying that they were keeping one of her sons. So let us pray for, I think, Jackson. That's the one that they kept uh, last night and pray that uh, a speedy recovery of whatever the illness might be. I thank God for the power of prayer and I thank God for the power of presence. And that just to know that we have someone with us makes everything a little bit better. I come on this Palm Sunday to preach on the subject upon his shoulders. And sometimes in the season of Lent, uh, there is enough, not enough Sunday to capture all that we see leading to Calvary. And it is during these seasons, Advent and the Lenten season, that I put a tag on, and for Lenten is on the road to Calvary. And I try to find scriptures that mostly are not preached from the pulpit. And here I find one in that 10th chapter of Mark, that first verse. And we have to keep in mind that Mark wrote these words about 37 years after Jesus' death. But he listened to Peter, and he listened to some of the disciples. And since everyone in that day and time weren't privileged to get an education, we know something about that, that there were only a few who could read and write. And Mark was one who could. So he gathered all of the stories about Jesus and he gave the new church, the new Christian church, something that they could pull out and read. And he gave to us these words where he says in that first verse that Jesus was on the road toward Calvary. And on this particular day, he was walking by himself. And it speaks to the pressure and the duress of life that Jesus was under. Somebody know a little something about being under life's pressure. When you simply are having a bad day, it's sometimes better just to stay in bed, pull the cover over your head, than to get up, to go out, to catch you know what. And as I continue on this road, we call Calvary, to witness some of the event that calls our attention 
to the things Jesus did within the last few weeks of his life on earth. I want to look now on the humanness of Jesus. A few Sunday now past, I showed you the frustration uh, with the bad things happening in the temple. And when he left out and went to the Mount of Olives, the next morning on his way back to the temple, he saw a fig tree. And the fig tree looked fruity. But when he got close, it had no fruit. And Jesus personalized the fig tree and had a conversation with it. Rather than to take his anger out on some human being, we can learn from that fig tree. Then we see at the time they were sharing the last meal that the disciples were into themselves. And he got up from the table, wrapped the towel around his waist, grabbed a basin and poured some water in that basin, got down on his knees and washed all of his disciples' feet. And now we see him making his entry into Jerusalem. Y'all don't mind if I back into this text this morning. And uh, he is walking on the road to Jerusalem. But he is walking by himself. People are around him, but he has distant himself a few feet ahead of them. The crowd is still with him, but the pressure is mounting. It's on his shoulders. The blueprint God has given him required him to go to a cross. It was put into play by his father, God. And Jesus agreed to die. He was forced, he wasn't forced to do it. And now he's mad with his disciples. They have gotten as my mother would say, on his last nerve. Look at this. James and John sneaks to him. And they are asking for special privileges. They want it to be treated special. The other ten hears about it. And they become mad with James and John. And we see the whole sauna, but we don't see what's going on among them. We see people in church, but we don't see the hell that goes in the church. Sometimes church folks can act like spoiled brats. When something is bigger than you and I, we want to pull all of the attention upon ourselves. Some of us want to be the MV member. They'll let you know they are the most valuable member 
of your church. I'm not talking about anybody. Thank you very much. And uh, he was having problems with the people he had called himself, his 12 disciples. And they did not get it, the importance of what God had sent him on earth to do. And the pressure is mounting. His father sees this. And he sends Moses and Elijah to console him. Y'all, y'all, y'all Bible scholars, y'all, y'all remember that? <laughs> Up on Mount Transfiguration, where God had a rendezvous with Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. They, they were sent there to tell Jesus what they had already gone through. Moses was catching it, y'all know. Because the people kept on complaining. They, they, they wanted to get out of Egypt, but after they got out of Egypt, they wanted to go back to the suffering that they had gone through. And Elijah saw what Queen Jezebel and her 450 Baal prophet were trying to take over and wipe God, Yahweh, the God of Moses, Abraham, and Jacob out. And they stood up. But we don't see the pain that they had to go through. And when you are responsible for your family, when you are responsible for making sure that everybody is all right, you take care of everybody, but you don't take care of yourself. Jesus was there, had taken care of everybody, and now the heat is on. Sent Moses and Elijah. But Peter spoke out of turn, ran Moses and Elijah away, and get this. As soon as Jesus comes down from that mountain, yes, right. he runs into a son who has an epileptic problem. His father brings him there. And whatever that was, he was going through it. And we really don't see Jesus being upset getting angry, having a bad day, because he's God's son. He's the one who has spiritual self-control. He is the epitome of love, and yet the humanness in him, Mark shows us. Mark says on that particular day, he was walking alone. Folks were there, but he wasn't saying a word. The pain was in his thoughts, and it was coming out in his personality. His level of tolerance was reaching its limit. And his disciples weren't making matters any better. All that they had seen, all that they had witnessed, all that they had heard, somehow they didn't get it. And all that he had taught them seemed like it did not register. We see why he took it out on that fig tree. It was personal. So he stopped talking. 
started walking by himself, he didn't want to see them acting like selfish fools, discussing among themselves what role they would have once their teacher was out of the picture. And this is the irony that we see today in life. This, this is the irony that we see on our television. This is the thing that we see when we have to deal with other people. I used to say to myself to motivate me early in the morning because I'm not a morning person. The things I got to do to make a living. And then I would walk by my son's bedroom and I would look at them. And I would stand there before I even jump in the shower and say to myself, these are my responsibility. And somehow, I, I know I couldn't get back in the bed. I had to go and face that mule. You, you, that, that's, that's what I used to call when I went to work. Because even when I got there early, that mule told me I was late. And I had to plow. Y'all don't know anything about plowing just to make and meet. Because before y'all started making no six-figure salary, all of us had a J-O-B. But y'all clapping. But y'all didn't get that J-O-B. It stands for just over broke. When, 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 when FICA start deducting and start taking away and then you go to social retirement, start taking away and you see what you gross and then on the, and they never have the net on the top. They always have the net some, somebody, somebody been there and let me get in y'all's living room right about now. Y'all know what I like? Grape soda and potato chips and have a little desk that I can kick my feet up because some of us have been in the same living room that I'm talking about. No matter how hard you try, Life got a way of trying to push you back. No matter how good you try to be, somebody going to get on your nerve in the course of a day. And the things that you got to go through just to make a living. And here, Jesus is having his bad day. And we got to be careful, very careful, that we don't let ego, I'm talking to somebody now, don't get the best of us. You know, all of us got an ego. And all of us want things the way we want it. And it seems like it's just we can't please some people. Can, can I preach it the way I want to preach it? It's just hard to satisfy some people. And, and I'm not talking about y'all because I want y'all to come back. So I got to talk about my family. It, it, it's some I got to love. It, 
because we got some of the same blood inside of them. Uh, and, and, and I used to hear my mother say when she got mad with us, I got to love you because I brought all of y'all in the world. But there are some folks who can stand a nice sharp pin to take the air out of our heads. And, and let me tell you, what we are seeing now in this potential president again, notice I ain't calling any names. And in my sermon preparation, I have a box where I put clippings, stories, and quote. So when I want to find a story, I go to that box. And I go through them to find the one that is appropriate for the sermon that I'm going to preach. And in that box this week, I found a clipping that was 40 years old. That's how long I've been preaching. And it was from a newspaper where the person was interviewing Donald J. Trump. And Donald Trump said, I'll be 36 next year. And I've done everything I can do. Sometimes I think it was a mistake to have race through it all so fast. What's the next level up? The grass isn't always greener. I work and I don't worry. How can you top that? I protect myself as well as anybody can. I prepare for things, but ultimately, we all end up going. I don't believe in reincarnation, heaven or hell. Thank you, sir. But we go somewhere. Do you know? I cannot for the life of me figure out where. So we are not surprised what we are seeing in him right now. Ego can destroy our good intention. And no matter Jesus was upset, rightfully so, his disciples were slipping into darkness. They were losing the little impartation he had placed inside of them. And we had a right, he had a right to be angry, to be upset, to be miffed. He had that right, that was his right. He told them three times about his death. Told them the kind of death he would go told them that he would get up from the grave. And no matter, can I bring this puppy home now? How hard we keep our composure. No matter how hard we try to do more right than wrong. Someone knows the right button to push, to get up upset, to get us discombobulated. They know we got a tick, and all they got to do is just scratch it. But I'm so glad, so very glad, that the God greater is in me than the thing that I got to come up against. 
And I'm so glad that God didn't give me a twin. Glad that Ray and Ned is not here today. They would dispute that. Sometime you got to walk all by yourself. Sometime you got to fight the battle. Oh, by yourself. Sometimes you got to get dirty and ugly and all of those things to separate the right from the wrong. And all of that may be your fight. Right may often turn to might. Wickedness a while may reign. Sin caused may seem to gain. But I'm so glad that there is a God who rules above with heart of power and a heart of love. And if I'm right, he'll fight my battle, make my enemy my footstool, go ahead of me, smooth out the rough places, turn my midnight into day. So glad that trouble don't last always so glad that my help is on the way Jesus my midnight rider Jesus my heavy load cherub Jesus my rock in the middle of a wheel will come to my rescue will come and see about me will come and make everything every every heartache every pain every setback every disappointment he will he will make it all right trouble get in my way got to cry sometime but there's one thing that I know Jesus will fix it so you go on home put the matter in God's hand whatever your midnight might be God will God will, God will fix it after a while. Stay in the battlefield, keep the good fight. He will make a way for you. He will see you through. I trust in God. I don't know about you, but I cast all of my cares upon him. I put it into his hand because my God, he never sleep nor slumber. Somebody else say he's an on time. He's an on time, on time. And when he decides to show up, it's all right with me because I'm going to wait upon him not going to try to get in a hurry not going to try to get out in front of him but I'm going to stay right there until he shows up and let me encourage somebody as I get ready to open up the doors of the church we all have dark days we all have days that we just throw our hands up. But I've learned that you can have a bad moment, but never have a bad day. With God, you can overcome anything. And I like how the little short Shirley, Shirley Caesar say, there's nothing too hard. For God. You, 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 you may not 
know God like you should. You may not have accepted Jesus as your savior, but most of us who are in his ark started on the outside of that ark we call safety. We were into ourselves, having too much fun. You know, I, we used to have this same, my brother and I, we didn't go looking for the party. We brought the party with us. I, I, I think I got some people, I got my eyes closed, but I think I got some people who, who, who had everything that you needed to have a good time. You, you, you had your man or your woman by your side. You had a little money in your pocket. And sometimes you sneaked a little, mm-hmm, everything you needed to have a good time. Not thinking that every day you are getting older. Every day you get older comes some kind of responsibility. And then you realize that you are not the child anymore. You are the parent. You are responsible. And that thing could be frightening if we let it be. But then I found Jesus and I cast, started casting my cares upon him. I'm talking to somebody now. I know your ego. I know what's important. But let me speak to your heart right now. You're not going to have that youth. You're not going to have that strength. You're not going to have what you got right now. Time is filled with swift transgression. And if you don't know him, now is a good time to know him. And it may be somebody this morning who wants to try Jesus. Give him a try. And as I ask you to stand on your feet, you can come now from your pews and say, Pastor, I want to give Jesus a try. I want to get to know him for myself. If I'm talking to you this morning, come on now. Step out on, come to the altar. God can meet you here. And God can take you where you need to go. The song says, earth has no sorrow. That heaven cannot heal. Is there one this morning? The doors of the church are open.
high, but y'all can be a little quiet. Dearly beloved, for as much as all people are deceived and born in sin, that our Savior Christ said none can enter into the kingdom of God except they be generated, or out of new water and of the Holy Ghost. I beseech you to call upon God the Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ, that of his bountiful and mercy he will grant to this child that thing which by nature we cannot have, that we may be baptized with water and the Holy Ghost and receive into Christ's holy church and be made a living member of the same. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who of your great mercy did save Noah and his family in the ark from perishing by the Lord. And also did save and led the children of Israel, your people, through the Red Sea, figuring thereby holy baptism and by the baptism of your well beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in the river of Jordan, did sanctify water for the holy sacrament. We seek you and your infinite mercy that you would look upon these children, wash them with the Holy Spirit, that they, being received into the ark of Christ's church, and being steadfast in faith, joyful through hope, and, no, and rooted in love, they so pass the sway of the, this troublesome world yeah. that finally they may come to the land of everlasting life, they are to reign with the world without end, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Dearly beloved, for as much as this child is now presented by old Christian ancestors, I want you free, family, young family. Remember that it is your part and your duty see that this child, these children, be taught as soon as he and she shall be able to learn the nature and the end of this holy sacrament. And that this child may know these things the better, you shall call upon him or her to give regular attendance upon the appointed means of grace, such as the ministry of the word and the public and private worship of God, and further, you shall provide that this child shall read the Holy Scripture and learn the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, the Apostle Creed, the Catechism, and all other things which a Christian ought to know and believe to this child's soul's health, in order that he and she may be brought up to lead a virtuous and holy life, remembering always that baptism do represent to us that inward purity which disposes us to follow the example of our Savior Christ that as he died, rose again for us. So should we who are baptized, dying to sin, rise again to righteousness, continually mortifying all corrupt things, and daily proceeding all virtues and godliness. Now, Reverend Austin, going to read y'all some things, and we're going to see what your answer will be. <laughs> this is addressed to the parents of God. Will you teach? Let these children that Christ died and rose again for us, so should we who are baptized die unto sin and raise again unto righteousness. Amen. Amen. Will you teach that, will, will you continue to encourage the subduing of all corrupt affection and daily endeavor to see that they may grow in virtue and godliness? Hear the words of the gospel written by St. Mark in the 10th chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. And they were baptizing children, to him, and they were bringing children to him, that he might touch them. And he, and the disciple rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them. For for to such belong the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does, doesn't receive these into my kingdom, God will, like, like a child, God will, uh, no, God will not let them enter in. And he took the child.
child in his hand. Yeah. He blessed them, laid his hand upon them, and said unto them. Amen. 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 Let me get me on. My mama's name is Amen. Present to the parents their baptism certificate. I, I normally had mine on my wall. I don't know what y'all gonna do with yours. Yes, at this time they all need to part. Mm -hmm. Let each one I think he had to take a bathroom break. Where, where, where's my man? Oh. Hey. 
Now, y'all are going to take pictures, right? Right? Because y'all know I got to be in the pictures that I baptized. <laughs> Just want to share that with y'all. And the other request, I do receive copies. Amen. For my collection. All right. Just want to let y'all know. If I hadn't kept y'all too long, if y'all hadn't been in church long enough and want to stay a little while longer, those of you who want to do that, y'all continue to sit. Everybody who's ready to go, y'all continue to stand up. <laughs> I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived, by the Holy Spirit, born, the Virgin Mary, suffered, the Father, was crucified. Amen. The third day he rose from the dead, he sitteth on to heaven, sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judgment. I believe the church, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Give a hand of clap to our standing musicians, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank this choir. Give them a hand of clap. And give a hand of praise to yourself. Thank you all for being here. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ the love of God the fellowship of God allow it to rest to rule to abide with you now and forevermore let every heart say Amen.